probably can't hear much in this video because it's windy out here. But we're at Death Valley and I'm with the one, the only Michael Shane Bloom. Turns out he knows this place pretty well. And I'm going to try to steal our shots. I'm going to try to steal his spot at least. I probably won't succeed in stealing his shots because I tend to be on the epic side. We've got some pretty awesome conditions right now. Partial cloud, beautiful, beautiful sand blowing in the distance, which is going to create a really awesome atmosphere for the shots. So, we lucked out. Here it was just bluebird skies. It's looking epic today, so it'll be interesting to see how different conditions affect my the outcome. I predict slightly more successful outcome today. That's my prediction. Most people, when they come to a huge area like this, it's overwhelming, right? So how do, you, how do you go about starting to spot composition? I, I'm always looking at little areas, right? I'm never looking at everything all at once. I'm kind of like picking out little areas and I'm trying to find shapes and patterns, repetition, textures. Basically, the, the way I see sand dunes is they're really chaotic. It's just a whole lot of chaos, beautiful chaos, right? And as a photographer, you're trying to simplify that chaos. And that's, I think, the hardest part because coming out here and just snapping a picture, it, it's, it's beautiful, but it's hard to get those shapes and patterns to line up. So, you know, moving a foot in every direction can completely change what the composition looks like and, and um, what type of image you're capturing, really. So. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a tough one. Sand dunes are not an easy place to, to get a great picture, but it's definitely one of the most rewarding places because um, I mean, they just look incredible. And the thing is too, I, I try not to worry about it. The, the, the biggest tip I can give for the, finding an interesting composition is to just walk around, look around at stuff, and try not to set that expectation of, I need to get an epic shot because those times when you have that expectation, it's really hard to actually get a shot. It's, it's more fun to just go around without the expectation, go for the experience, and then through that experience of discovering, you know, all the patterns and shapes, then you actually find that really awesome composition that you were looking for. What I've been doing is just wandering around. When we first got here, the light was really dramatic because we had direct light hitting, hitting the sand dunes at the same time as these big storm clouds kind of passing over in the distance. So I experimented with a few wide angle shots, but never really found anything that I, that I felt great about with the wide angle lens. Part of it is that I can't change lenses when I'm out here because 
obvious reasons I would have a camera full of sand. So I, I was stuck with an 18 millimeter prime, not, not the most flexible lens to shoot with when you're trying to dial in a uh, composition. So I would say the majority of my favorite shots have all been with the 100 to 400 and just picking out, you know, repeating patterns and, and lines leading to certain peaks in the background. I find myself constantly trying to put one of those triangular shaped peaks in the, as my background. It's just habit, I guess, from being, living in the Pacific Northwest. Everything has to have a volcano in the background. Not everything needs to be a mountain, <laughs> Nick. Everything needs to have a mountain. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> now the light's getting lower, it's getting more golden, it's getting a little bit more difficult to shoot into the sun, so I better shut up and take my last few photos, telephoto with things backlit because it's going to get kind of harsh here pretty soon shooting that way. But man, I just love this, this direct light, the blowing sand, interesting cloud formations. We've got it all today. This is as good as it gets here. So I would feel pretty crappy if I didn't come away with a good photo. Contrary to what he says, you always have to get an epic photo. Oh, it's very rewarding to get a great photo. been absolutely incredible. Right now we've lost our direct light because the sun is behind a bank of clouds and now soon to be back behind the mountains in the background, but we still have so much going on for interest. We have all this blowing sand, plenty of wind obviously, if you can even hear me. Uh, we have all the shapes in the sand and we have really amazing cloud structures, 360 degrees all around us. So because we have so much sky interest, I'm trying to find a wide angle shot to utilize some of that. Whether I'm succeeding, I don't know. I'm just gonna go copy this guy. Why are you talking into the camera? <laughs> you're, you're supposed to be shooting with it. So anyways, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to uh, find a wide angle composition to utilize some of this cool sky interest that we have. So that's what we're doing. Mr. Shane Bloom, what do you have going on? Uh, I'm just doing a video clip of this cloud right here. It's pretty incredible. I mean, there's so many different shades and shapes and colors in this cloud. It's it's like it's a it's a, it's a, it's its own life form and it's kind of just transforming and moving towards us. I mean, just the patterns in the clouds right now. Like you can see um, some modest clouds up there. Cumulus. A little bit of darkness. A little bit of brightness. A little bit of good, a little bit of evil. <laughs> there's just so much going on in this cloud. Needless to say, there's plenty going on to keep us entertained. Gorgeous night. 